percent definitely you know when it, okay so we're talking about lifestyle images really at the end of the day you just want to make sure that people understand again they're not able to touch the product they can't pick it up and be like oh, this is a cancer you know whatever it might be so you have to do everything you possibly can to you know um shorten that that barrier of entry when it comes to the consumer understanding the product so lifestyle images is really more in use um where you're using it how you're using it and who is using it and you know sometimes the most finite small little details can make or break you and what's really interesting about that is a lot of times you know people will you know have a product that is again for an elderly person or someone who's you know the 50s or 60s or something or even older elderly older of course um but they actually have Hold someone it. what who's was in their the 30s. age for elderly well elderly is over 60. Oh, 50 okay. for okay. elderly <laughs> Maybe you will push like to the 80s to say the word elderly. Okay, like, you okay. know, it's based with a new time nowadays. So, you know, I'm almost 40 myself. So I'm kind of getting to that demographic myself. <laughs> um, but really at the end of the day, you just really want to make sure that you're representing your particular audience appropriately. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, people using stock images, which, you know, you can find someone of the demographic that you're looking for. But again, you know, if you're going to be hiring, you know, a photographer, do your due diligence to get the right people, the right background, the right setting, and just make the most of it in order to make sure that like, you're getting the most bang for your buck for the most part, and that you don't have to redo this because you can leverage that and reuse it and repurpose it over and over again, you know, for as long as you're, you're selling that particular product. One of the things uh, you can go and get free and people that are want to become influencers and they they might give you a good photo. You can go out and get a ten dollar photo. But at the end of the day, if you go and do your homework, if you spend a bit more, it, it might be one hundred dollars, but you're going to have that person that knows exactly how to do the photo but it, you have to do your mm. research like if you're looking just for candid photos like you'd see on instagram fine you can go out and get them and if they serve a purpose but i think on your amazon account i would try to find that demographic i'd pay a little bit extra because even if you pay a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars people might think that's a lot of money for one shot they'll usually give you a few shots but it's your demographic and the other thing is lifestyle does not mean stock photo with your photo with a bar of soap five times bigger than it should be. Everybody knows yeah. it's a fake, right? It used to, you yep. used to be able to do that. No problem. But now everybody knows, oh, I've seen the same thing on Pixabay and I don't rec, I don't use Pixabay. If I'm going to use a, um, like a, a, a stock photo place, I'll pay for Adobe. Like I, I've got Adobe stock. Um, or you could use Shutterstock or whatever, but uh, the quality of the pictures, everybody uses the same pictures, the same woman in a bathtub holding up soap, you know, it's, it's <laughs> yes. always the same one, but, um, and, and, oh, Unsplash, I think it's Unsplash. They've got some really cool stock photos, by the way, that you can kind of work into not so much. Um, I, I use them more for social media, but really, really cool. So, um, uh, photos anyways, that's my, my take on the lifestyle photos. Yeah. And you know, the beautiful thing is that a hundred and $200 is not a lot of money really at the end of the day. But if you really think about how long that particular little asset that you've created for your business will last and how you can like repurpose it in so many different means. Like you can do obviously images, you can create, take the infographics that you've created and put it into a slideshow video. So you can get that up on your listing, you can get it on Instagram, you can get it, you can use it everywhere. You can make a sizzle reel of your particular product and, and whatnot. So really at the end of the day, like it's the most important little bit of money that you possibly spend to position your particular product line. Like I, you know, like it's something that like I get I'm so like revved up about it. I'm, hoping actually that I just pitched Ted talks um, on the science behind graphics and we'll see how we'll see if they'll come back and say yay or nay on, on that particular one. But it's just such an important piece that even if you're selling digital products, it doesn't matter what, if you are literally putting anything online, you have to use visuals to sell to people like period. And if you don't do a good enough job, then you're definitely leaving money on the table is really what it is at the end of the day. Um, and uh, outside of that, if we kind of swing back to like, you're we talking about like, what's the sort of thing for the lifestyle images, lifestyle images, of course, is, is one aspect, 
But then if we bring in the infographic aspect, I really want to make sure that people understand there's a difference between the images that you have on your website compared to Amazon. Now, of course, you can use the exact same images for your Amazon and your website and Instagram and everywhere else. And you should have consistency across all platforms. It's very, 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 very important. <laughs> but at the same time, when people are going to your website, there's no one else for them to jump to. Your website is not forcing them to go to look somewhere else. So you don't have to necessarily like put a lot of weight on the features and benefits, right? Where on Amazon, because it is a marketplace with so many similar, uh, similar products or similarity between the different product lines or whatnot, people like what you're doing, you're, you couldn't decide. They're like, do I go to this one or do I go to this one? Do I go to this one or whatnot? And then you get that buyer decision fatigue. So, you know, that features and benefits aspect needs to be a little heavy handed for the Amazon space because that's what people are comparing. And so a perfect example of that is like if someone's going to be buying like binoculars or whatever it might be. Well, we have two different you know binoculars and a person's looking at two different listings and one of them might actually have like a compass on it where the other one doesn't. And the customer may not even know how to use a compass or even need a compass, but because it had that extra little feature, that's going to be the tipping scale for them to buy because they're getting more bang for their buck. So you really want to take that into consideration. But on your website, you know, if they if they only if you don't have a compass on it, but you have everything else and you're properly positioned, they don't actually need it. But they're there because you've sent them there. They're you know they're you know like no trust able to buy, and you can educate them a little bit more. Of course, you have more room for pictures. You have more room for information. More room to do whatever you want on your own personal website. But you also want to take that into consideration as to where you are at um with the particular product and what platform it's on as well. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur, entrepreneur.